world where equality is just another euphemism for mediocrity, where participation is more highly valued than achievement, where just enough to get by is the new standard of excellence. There is a small minority of people who fight back against such apathy, who struggle daily to reach new heights. These brave few are the hope for the future, the bright shining light for the next generation. They are the ones who will lead us to the places we have never dreamed of, to the undiscovered country, to reach goals only a few can even begin to imagine. Unfortunately, none of those people could be here tonight, so kick back and relax. Prepare yourself for several hours of fun, friendship, fascinating conversation, and fabulous music. All those Fs, that's an alliteration and kind of a radio trick. Speaking of radio, you're listening to the most popular radio station in the history of broadcast radio, at least among stations that originate from Chris's living room. It's Curious Times. Your host is a curious listener. Here she is, Chris. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Curious Times. It's Sunday. Oh, my God. Where did the weekend go, right? Uh, Sunday, June 25th. Where did June go? Oh my God. The year is half over, you guys. Are you kidding me? You know what? You have six shopping months left to get my Christmas presents, okay, kids? And, uh, so there you go. You've been given an advance warning. Um, and, um, okay, we have Garima here tonight. And just to quickly let you know what's uh, coming up, Nick had to bow out for Tuesday. He's flying back from Boston or some such place. Um, and he offered to uh, come, uh, I think, in the second week if we can find a spot for him. So uh, we may not have to go a whole month before we hear from young Nick. And um, uh, so that, uh, that took care of Tuesday. Monday was a day off. Kathleen Moore here is your Wednesday. And then Jen Young, I'm not sure if she's back or, or if she's what she's doing or if she is going to take that last uh, Thursday of the month off. Um, uh, because she did tell me she was looking uh, to have the month of June off. So Salva's back on Friday, and hopefully Kimber's going to feel better for her show on Saturday. I'm I'm really striking out on Saturdays lately. I got Kimber that doesn't feel well, Yvette that forgets the show is on, Aaliyah, who it's not a good night for. <laughs> it's like, uh oh, Saturday nights are are not going so well lately, um, here. But we'll we'll see what we can do. Um okay, Garima is a uh, person who uh for those of you guys that uh haven't been around for the past couple of times. Yeah, okay, Corinne, you can come on, on Saturday nights. Saturday night and I ain't got nobody. And um but I don't like running around on short notice like that. And then like will the person get back to me? Will the person not get back to me? And like all that. I I can't handle that anymore. I'm getting too old. And uh by the way, like in Aaliyah's defense, she did um, offer a replacement, but given that it was short notice, you know, I, I wrote to the woman and said, if you want to come on the show, that's very good. Uh, let's do it right, though, and we'll get you scheduled. We'll get your bio and your picture and all that kind of stuff where we can have it, you know, properly set up like that. So uh, we'll be discussing that with another one of the Kara Center graduates. And so uh, we got uh, connected through uh, to Garima in that same way. And uh, she uh, graciously stepped in on very short notice uh, for Aliyah and had such a great time that uh, she I'm a regular uh, fourth Sunday each month. And so uh, so Grima is here. Uh, she's a certified clairvoyant, psychic medium, and an energy healer. Uh, she's interested in the non-physical, and she loves to dive deep in the world of intuition and spirit. She truly enjoys connecting with her clients and providing a wholesome reading, touching important areas of their lives. To learn more about Garima and the services that she provides, please visit her website at www.spiritual-alignment.com. And you can also call her uh, at 302-521-3488. And you can email her as well, Garima0608. Oh, happy belated birthday. 
must be June's, June 8th birthday. Anyway, garima0608 at gmail.com. So let's just bring uh, Garima on and find out how she's doing. Hi, Garima. Hi, Chris. I am here. Oh. Yes, you are. <laughs> therefore, <laughs> I'm here, therefore I am. And uh, yeah. how, how's your summer been? Summer been um, exciting. Um, this was my birthday month, as you kindly noted. And um, I noticed that I actually never felt so much more alive before. Um, mm. This birthday was just amazing. And not because we did anything special, but there was just so much more peace in my inner world that I was never able to experience before. Um, especially uh, the eight, last eight, nine months have been rough. And not not rough from the point of view that my outside world was falling apart, but more rough in the sense that with, with my awareness, I knew all different types of energies I was working on, pictures I was working on, um, and there were a lot of really, a lot of them were related to my heart chakra. Um, so really, it's been um, a lesson around self acceptance, uh, self image, self love. Um, but now I'm here, and I just feel so much more at peace. Um, have m- so many better relationships in life, so much more depth, so much more meaning, and the ability to own myself, which I feel like I never experienced before. So this is like awesome. This is really mind blowing. Awesome. That's great. That's great. Um, and uh, so, of course, summer just started technically, but really, I always feel like by the time we pronounce that summer started, that it's been here for a while. You know? um, and so. So now, just for the people who um, are new and haven't heard you before, just give us a quick uh, rundown on how did you um, come into this whole area of um, yeah. pursuing your spirituality and, and honing your uh, mediumship and, and intuitive ability. Yeah, so um, it's a pretty interesting story. I have been one of those people, Chris, um, who were just very type A personalities. Um, I always wanted to go to best universities in the world, work at best companies, make a lot of money, get promotions fast, and always like trying to prove myself that I am good enough and uh, very materialistic and not like being mean or selfish to others, but at the same time very uh, unconscious. Um, so this all started about over like three and a half years ago uh, when I was pregnant, um, and I read somewhere um, that when when women go through pregnancy, their awareness actually shoots up quite a bit. Um, so I started toying with the idea, maybe just developing my intuition, and I don't know where I got inspiration from, but luckily I had a psychic friend at that point. Um, And she taught me how to meditate and how to receive images. So I started working with her, uh, worked with her for about about two months, um, and then kept meditating and kept meditating. And as you know, when you meditate, magic starts to happen. Your whole inner world, outer world keeps shifting because of all the energies you keep releasing. Um, so I did that, and then I joined uh, Boulder Psychic Institute, um, studied there for, I, I am still with them, uh, doing the Avatar program. It's a graduate-level program, um, and after it ends, by the end of this year, I'm, I will be getting a um, spiritual minister license to practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have been with them for about two and a half years, took energy management courses, um, learned learn psychic skills from them. Um, I also briefly worked with Aliyah Dawn, too, um, on a one-on-one basis to work on my mediumship skills. But at the end of the day, I'm a a very regular person. I have a job, a very fulfilling job. I have a beautiful marriage, nice family. I have two beautiful kids, um, all these relationships in life. Very regular person. And um, I feel like, A lot of people believe that they have to be spiritual, and in that process, they can't have a material life, an earthly life that that could be fulfilling. And I feel like um, I'm just trying to find my balance and, you know, keeping on learning to create that balance, stay connected to earth 
enjoy a fulfilling earthly life, but also stay very, very connected um, to the spirit world. Um, so, yep. yeah, that's that's where I am right now in life. Yeah, that's great. And so how long have you been uh, doing actually readings for people? Um, it's been about uh, three and a half years. And are you focusing mostly on mediumship, or are you doing the whole full meal deal? Will my boyfriend call me on Tuesday? <laughs> so, um, so I uh, I do psychic readings mainly, uh, but also do a lot of energy work. Um, you know, so I I see energy and I'm not able to um, um, work with the energy. So if I'm seeing blockages in somebody's space, I can slide those healings from a distance as well. Mm. Um, psychic medium is something I do as well, but my main focus is psychic readings. Okay, so you know I had forgotten that about you. You're right. I always I always um, associate um, the folks that come to me through Aaliyah as primarily mediums and secondarily psychics. You know what I mean? And so I keep forgetting that uh, that you because uh, I remember that now that you say that that you uh, did clear clear that up for me. Last time. In fact, last time I think that you wanted to just uh, focus on psychic readings. Yeah, but if you remember, last time we did a lot of spirit guide readings, and those are not too different than mediumship readings, and I feel like the lines are blurry in this world. So everything is fair game, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely right, absolutely. Um, so now, um, so for you then, um, if somebody asks you a question, are you receiving like thoughts in your head or pictures? And like, how does this unfold for you? Yeah. So when somebody asks a question, um, a lot of things happen. Um, I focus on their aura layers, their chakras, and see what lights up um, to understand what is the energy of their question. And once they are able to ask me to look into a specific area of their life, I start receiving images from there on. And so how um, often do you, like some of my readers, they don't want to know anything about it, for, you know, they don't want to, because sometimes even just the question itself uh, sort of, you know, suggests what the problem is, you know what I mean? I, I always use the example, like, if a person says, like, will I ever get a job? <laughs> <laughs> no, like you're not being too psychic if you say, "Oh, so it's been a while since you've had employment, I guess." Eh? <laughs> and uh, um, so, for that reason, sometimes uh, you know, I I have a mix of people: some who wish that they would have a very specific question, and others who don't want to have a question at all. Yeah, uh, and that's fine too. They don't need to have a question because. As I zone into their energies, I start receiving image uh, from that point. So um, they're going to, just just for, by me focusing on their energies, I'm going to know a lot more about them if they agree to it. Right. Now, so are you, are you like, reading um, auras or chakras or what, how, uh, just purely energy? Like, I mean, it's all energy, but, like, do you have a, you know what I mean? Some people, they call themselves like a chakra reader or some people call themselves an aura reader. Um, do you yeah, see aura? So, or? Yeah, so I read uh, auras, aura layers. I read chakras of people, um, but not in the sense of, hey, Chris, I want to read fourth aura layer for you, but more in the sense of, okay, Chris, ask me a question and let me see um, if there's any aura layer lighting up for me to look into, and then that may be able to give me information. Um, I read past life uh, as well. Um, that that I love reading past life as well. Um, there's just so much more information we can get um, from understanding past life and recurring themes that a person has experienced throughout, you know, across lifetimes. Um, I read spiritual essence. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah, I read spiritual essence of people at the soul level, where they're at, um, you know, what's unique about them, who they are. Um, I do relationship reading. I do uh, sessions with moms uh, who are pregnant. Um, yeah. yeah, so so there's a variety of things I look at. 
and really it depends on what's really lighting up in, in people's space as they ask questions, as I look into the energies. Right, right, right. Um, so my, my thing was, is that like where, when it comes to past lives, you know, I find that at least so many of the people that I've, you know, sort of come into contact with who focus on that, um, it kind of irritates me when, when they, they, they go and they find somebody that like, you know, tells them, oh, you know, you were cheated on in your past life and that's how come you, and, and so like, like, and I don't know the answer to any of this, but like my idea is, is that like when I die after this lifetime and I properly cross through the light and, and I do my life review and all of this kind of thing that I'm putting this, this particular, um, incarnation like to bed. You know what I mean? I'm bringing closure to it. It's a part of my soul's experience then at that point. And, you know, I kind of like to think that um, my next life, you know, I start with a fresh sheet of paper, if you will. And so I see people that go, like, they it's just that they rely so heavily on this past life reading, and then, and then they use that as their excuse to fail or as their reason for being a certain way that's undesirable or whatever. And so like, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Like, yeah, what, yeah. What do you, what yeah, happens? this is, this is an interesting topic and um, an interesting question. And, you know, there are many school of thought in, even in spirituality. So people are going to give you different answers, but what I really think is, um, when we die, Chris, um, we have our auras, right? And we we are uh, we remain as an energy after we leave our body, um, and that aura, that energy at that time has a lot of different energies, uh, a lot of blockages, a lot of uh, things that are working well, uh, you know, in human life that work well for us in human life. Uh, when we take all those energies, uh, we have a review, and in that review, all those things are looked at, uh, and they become the lessons that we need to work upon in the following lifetime, right? Even though even though we die um, and then this is a fresh new life and we shouldn't be looking at past, a lot of times the, there are recurring themes in our life, um, things that we have worked in the past life too, and they, they keep coming on. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, in one of the past lives, Chris, I was a baby who was abandoned by her mother. And this lifetime, for the longest time, I had this energy from um, my relationship with my mom that I just couldn't understand. There was just so much abandonment energy that kept coming up and up. And nothing that my poor mom did to me to cause that. But I was clueless on exactly um, where it is coming from. And when I looked into it, it looked like I had a past life where I just didn't have that connection, that bonding with my mom, and I used to keep crying as a baby and wouldn't be attended by anybody. Um, and it affected me severely in this lifetime. But but it, but that piece is irrelevant, right? Okay, I had this abandonment energy. What's really relevant that I can use um, some, like, pep talk or, or, or some sort of uh, learning in this lifetime is, really realizing that power is within me. Even though people may abandon me, it doesn't matter who stands next to me or not. As long as I, I feel, I believe that I am a powerful being and all I need to depend on myself is just myself, right? So that right. lesson that lesson learned was so valuable for me um, that it doesn't even matter which lifetime and who I was right. and what I experienced, but the lesson is really valuable. Yeah. But see, I tend to look at that as, you know, um, you know, that you, your purpose for coming this time was to deal, you know, to come and, and be less affected by such a thing. I mean, let's face it, in everybody's life, there's some form of abandonment going on, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean there, yep. I mean, we, we, lose, we lose people all throughout our whole lifetimes, you know, we... When we're kids, we go through those times when our best friend, you know, has to move away or 
or the fights that, you know, kids get into or whatever, that kind, and then, you know, you lose your first boyfriend or girlfriend or, you know, like the, um, and the, and then some people deal with it in a much deeper level, which is to say that, you know, their, their parents have abandoned them or even though they're with their parents, their parents are not nurturing them. And so in which case they're kind of on, they may as well be on their own in a sense anyways. And so, you know, I would look at that more like to say that, you know, you, um, you had a lifetime where where that was an issue and a struggle for you and now you have a lifetime where um you're more easily able to adapt and uh you've come into uh where in this lifetime you're um you're you're able to come to that uh notion that you're you're okay you know what i mean like hey we all will have Oh, but might be better off with this or that, you know what I mean, or in a in a great relationship or whatever. But knowing knowing that you are okay on your own um, is you know is worth the weight in gold. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think so many people struggle with. I think that that's the basis of so many people, um, women in particular, um, getting stuck in. Uh, bad relationships is because they don't think or want to be alone and so they're willing to put up with a bad relationship instead of no relationship you know what I mean yeah um no I I agree Uh, I agree with whatever you just said um but I also think as a collective you know as a human species as a collective we're working on certain lessons together and one of the main reasons to come to incarnate on the earth was to work on um, finding our own power, to have expectation-free relationships, to to stay connected with the divine and, and recognize our divinity in, in all moments. So what, what you're just saying are collective lessons that we're all working on. Now, my abandonment, I feel like, was heightened more than it is for other people because I was a baby in that lifetime and that really uh, strained, uh, not exactly strained, but it affected my relationship with my mom and I just could never put finger why that happened. Um, it, I was just not not aware of that and once I became aware of it, things turned dramatically uh, in my relationship. So yeah, you're, you're right that there are some uh, common themes that we're all working on, but at the same time, everybody's setup is different in this lifetime. What they attract in this lifetime is going to be different than others. And they it's just going to be different. Yeah, I mean, I just think that when people go, you know, like, oh, I had, I was abandoned last time, so that's how come I struggle with it this lifetime or something. Like, I go, like I'm, I think that we, whatever we're dealing with in each lifetime was fully intended, we fully intended to deal with. And I'm not even sure I like the word lesson. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. As much as experience, you know, we come to experience yeah. a wide range of uh, physical and emotional uh, yeah. situations. And um even though when we're in a human form, we feel that there's a right and a wrong way to do that, I'm not so sure that on a spiritual level or a soul level that there is. Like I hear people talk about, um, well, you didn't you didn't do that right, so you have to go back and redo that all over again. Like I don't, that doesn't sit well with me, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, we cannot relive that lifetime, but at the same time, if we are more aware, more conscious of these energies, these emotions, these thoughts and feelings that come up, we're we're more likely to say, okay, you know what, that's not my truth. If a feeling that's coming up that um, that doesn't resonate with our truth, which is like, okay, in my case, for example, that my mom did something for me uh, or didn't do something for me, and I'm just like, just angry inside um if i'm more aware more conscious of it i can say okay yes that came up that feeling came up but that i'm not that feeling i'm going to let it pass because that's not my truth so just understanding i feel like those of those experiences those energies i feel like could be critical for a lot of people Mm -hmm. yeah yeah interesting um, so, would do, again, do you see people's aura? And I think I asked you before, like, um, 
you know, like if you can do past lives, there, then there's no reason why you can't do future lives, eh? Um, no, actually, uh, future life, I have never seen a future life. Um, and I feel like a lot of that uh, depends on how this lifetime goes. Like we were talking about the review process, right? Um, when we leave our body, uh, there are energies within our space. And when we take those energies uh, with us on the astral plane, um, we go through a lifetime review. And at that point, the future lifetime is set. So a lot can happen between now and at, and that point. Um, so I haven't read any future lifetimes, but if you know of a way to read that, I'll be just very interested to hear that. Well, let me propose it to you this way. Have you ever heard yeah. it put that, like, all, there is no time, like, all our existences are happening on different, um, uh, dimensions at the same time. Past, present, yeah. future, all happening at the same time. And so it's on that basis that I... I um, think and wonder about then if we can do past lives, why can't we do future lives? Because the future yeah. lives and past lives are all happening right now. And um, and so that's and so then I have to say uh, other other than I guess you would know. Uh, let me not answer this one for you. Like, how do you know it's a past life that you're reading? Um, I know past life because, uh, let me think about that. <laughs> Good one, eh? <laughs> no, no, I, I agree with you that there is no, um, there is no time dimension uh, when it comes to spirit. I know it's a past life because I asked for a past life, so that's my simple explanation. I asked the spirit to show me a past life, yeah. Okay, so on that basis next time one time try an experiment and ask spirit to show you a future life yeah that's awesome that's uh really something i would experiment with and let you know how that goes but that that's yeah. a good food for thought yeah because it's a uh, it's if it's that simple if we can ask for the past why can't we ask for the future no, and if, if we're not doing that for some like don't like get me next week's lottery numbers or something like that. But by the way, if you can, then do. Um, but you know what I mean is that because yeah. uh, then have you ever looked into um, Akashic Records? Uh, I don't yeah, mean so you want and snooping into someone else's, but I mean into the subject of. Have you ever uh, looked into the subject of uh, Akashic Records? Yeah, so um I work so I work with um my Akashic record keeper, um, who is my higher self. Um so uh work with them on a self healing basis. Um, work with them on updating agreements, uh learning lessons from past life, uh, but not really take each lifetime and then read through them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um is my point being that like um for people that that's your book. You know what I mean? Like so Yeah. So that should be that contains all of your past lives and all of your future lives along with this life. Yes. Yeah. So, so I don't necessarily access my records in that way, but I work with yeah. my higher self to get me updates on things that I'm working on. So for example, mm -hmm. I went through childbirth like nine months ago. So I had my higher self update me from all the information I had in my previous lifetime when I was able to do this well, naturally, uh, drug-free, and, and really own my body in that process and let go of any fear. Um, they got me all that information from those lifetimes and fill my um, aura and chakra with that information. So that's one example uh, of something that I've worked on. And so it, that, the interest that's an interesting thing is that um – while you were pregnant, then you were already embarking upon your spiritual um, growth. Uh, and so I'm wondering if, like, were you already able to tune in psychically to your baby while the baby was inside of you? Yeah, Chris, it was really interesting because um, in, um year and a half before my baby was born, uh, my baby, I conceived my baby. Actually, no. 
um, about about an year before I conceived my baby, I knew it's going to be a girl. Um, one of my husband's aunts does not have kids, and they tried adopting, uh, but it didn't work. And one day a thought came to me, you know what? I can have kids. I can have a baby and I can give uh, my baby to them for adoption. And they're, they're, they're sweethearts. They're just absolutely adorable people. And I really want that happiness for them that um, I, I think every mother is deserving of. So we had this conversation with them one day um, and they said that they thanked us for the offer, but at the same time they said that they have passed that age to be able to adopt a baby um, at this point. Um, mm. And that night I came back home, Chris, and I slept at night. Um, this baby girl comes to me in my dream and told me that, Mom, I have agreements with you. Please don't give me a for adoption. And this is oh. like a year before she was even conceived. I, we were not even thinking about having a baby at that time. Yeah, that's interesting. But then that whole thing makes sense because the person that you uh, were approaching it to do this for, they had said thanks but no thanks. And so exactly. No matter, yeah. So no matter which way that was going to happen, but that's an interesting experience to um, have your child uh, come to you uh, in that way uh, before they're even conceived. Um, so, just that would yeah. just be a that would just be a blink of an eye, time wise, for the baby that's waiting um, to exactly. come. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And throughout those nine months, Chris, um, I connected with um, her, with my baby girl, you know, pretty much every day through meditation. Um, I I understood what our karma is to be softened in this lifetime, what our agreements are, what past life we have shared. Um, and really, um, not just that understanding, making space for this soul to come in, but also for the childbirth process, um, really setting that, that loving energy and releasing any fear, any doubt that my body cannot do it on my own. Um, so I feel like this, this is spirit work, this healing work, um, you know, the psychic work helps a lot, uh, especially in big events like pregnancy and childbirth. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And I think for most people, um, and, you know, of course, we're all different. And, and so there are a number of people who are fully in touch with their their own psychic ability and intuitiveness and whatnot at, an, at a younger age. And But usually the childbirth is happening in the younger ages. And um, usually people aren't uh, centered enough. You know what I mean? Um, uh, grounded enough and centered enough. And they haven't really even begun to um, explore these deep mysteries and wonderings of, uh, of their spirituality and what that all is about. And so uh, very interesting for somebody who is uh, in touch with all of that to, um, to go through uh, a pregnancy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, well, yeah. I think you're the first person who um, has, has, said anything about uh, being in communication with the child before conception, which is very good. Yeah, very good. Um, e even when I look at people's soul essence, I'm able to read the agreements they have with baby spirits, even for anybody, to be honest, because w what they do is uh, baby spirits, it's pretty interesting. Um, when they see um, there is like a couple or, or a mother or a father, um, who's going through life lessons which are similar to them, they start to hover around them and kind of entice them to have babies. Now, they don't understand that this woman has gone through menopause and not able to have babies. They don't understand any of that. But I, I'm able to see when, when they're around a, around a person um, and see, you know, if the agreement is strong or or, or not. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's part of my everyday life. But, yeah, it was really awesome to be able to stay connected. And, um, it's a huge lesson, Chris. Um, you know, you, you're right about the age piece. And I know in spirit world, there's no time, there's no age. But in human life, that's yeah. the time when you start opening yourself up. And, and this 
whole process is such a miracle of divine. Um, it really rips open your heart and you expand your ability to love and not just love your child, but love everybody so fiercely, so strongly. You realize your own power. And I'm just very passionate about working with women, uh, especially when it comes to childbirth and pregnancy, just because I had such an amazing experience both times. When you were, you said you were at Meditate, uh, uh, to, I guess, you know, be in touch with the baby um, when you were pregnant. And uh, did you have any, um, you know, were you already able to see what your baby would look like? And if so, did you, um, did what you were seeing in your mind's eye uh, match uh, what came out? Um, yeah, she did. Um, just a little bit. She looked like her older brother, so that was an easy one. But um, I spent a lot of time just being with her, just connecting with her, uh, seeing her energetically very close to me, um, which was really awesome. And then, um, you know, the whole grounding, just making sure the womb area is just clean every time energetically, um, you know, just filling that in the divine light and whatnot. So, so those uh, psychic tools helped me a lot throughout the pregnancy too. Um and so you so you went so you had this more profound experience in your second pregnancy is what I'm understanding, yes? Uh no, in my first when I was three and a half years old, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh Yeah, I have two. Um the second time it was a lot more stronger than first time, but the whole okay. Psychic skills, meditation, and all that uh, started three and a half years ago with my oldest pregnancy. What's your first one? Uh, I was I was wanting I was wondering if there was any uh, difference in the, the the bonding that goes on after the baby comes. You know what I mean? If but you don't have anything to compare that to, so um, but it has to benefit that bonding uh, in the. Yeah. Profound way, I would think. It is so profound, Chris, and everything was so different. Um, you know, at, when we incarnate as men, um, there are different lessons we want to learn on this planet. When we incarnate as women, um, there are different lessons. And when a mother is pregnant, depending on if it's a boy or a girl, what she experiences in her outer world, in her inner world, uh, really depends on what the child's mock up is for this lifetime, too. So with this with this girl, I was clearing a lot of relationship type of energy, a lot of expectation, feeling comfortable with uncertainty. When I was pregnant with my boy, I was I wanted to conquer the world. I was looking for jobs, uh, interviewed with forty different companies, finished my right. MBA, graduated, um, traveling for work all over the country. So it was a lot about accomplishing, you know, a lot about that sense of power. With my girl, it, it was all uh, the lessons were around the heart chakra more. So it's pretty unique. Uh, both experiences were very unique, and they speak a lot to what these two kids. Um, have set up for their own life that they the experiences they wanted to attract. Even the food that I was eating, Chris, is completely different. <laughs> you know, I think in some ways, because uh, you know, I was pregnant when I was twenty-ish, uh, uh, and um, I think in my own way, without without consciously intend, you know, like I didn't say, "Okay, now I'm going to psychically communicate with my kid." You know what I mean? I think that in some ways most mothers are doing that subconsciously even, you know what I mean? And, yeah. Uh, I think though that when you set your intent and um, do it with much more deliberation that a stronger connection is made. My whole thinking is, you know, that we always talk about how when babies first come and, and young children too, uh, that they're, they seem, they haven't had, they haven't unlearned their psychic ability. In other words, they haven't been, you know, conditioned by society that says that's not, you know, you have no invisible friend or, you know, you that's not possible or, you know, like, you know, all of that that goes on. And, yeah. and so, um, you know, I think that like babies and animals are really very psychic and uh, we can look to them often, I think, uh, in a in a home setting to 
to see if there's any spirit activity, uh, you know, because I think that that's the time when you have a, a dog or a kid, like, just, like, staring up at the ceiling or staring at some point where, at some place where we don't see something, but they see something. Um, so I think that the kids are, uh, the babies are a lot more, but it's a whole new angle, a whole new thing I hadn't really thought of. And so uh, enjoying this conversation because I'm thinking, you know, that, um, gosh, that could be a whole program that somebody runs, you know, with, with pregnant women and have them, like, we all know, like, the pro people, mothers who read to their babies uh, when the babies are uh, in the in the womb still and, and you know, just talking and, and nurturing the child in that way. But um, really trying to uh, telepathically or psychically communicate with that child will probably be highly successful because uh, the child hasn't unlearned it, right? Yeah. I would think no. that it would be really strong. They would be very capable of um, some kind of communication with us. Yeah, you're you're right. And, uh, yeah, children are just not conditioned to the level we are. And the more there's so much purity that they have and so much uh, ability to tap into the spirit world with so much ease and grace that we forget. And I have so many friends um, who have this ability since they were kids, and they have been told that, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, this doesn't happen. Um, some of them spent time in mental hospitals. You know, it was that severe. Um, some of them um, had depression throughout their life just because they have been just told that you're wrong. And, and when you don't have that level of acceptance for yourself, just, it's just it's a hot mess, you know. Um, so w there have been just a very few times when my oldest has told me that he sees somebody, and instead of asking, uh, instead of saying that there is nobody, I ask him, okay, what are they saying to you? You know, so that he can listen, he can try to understand what they're showing showing him. Hmm. Yeah, um, it is, and it happens a lot to um, empath children, uh, where they're really misunderstood, and they're they're the ones that are called crybabies and sissies and everything, you know, because they're they're feeling everything, and and it's overwhelming. And when you don't know that it's not yours. You know what I mean? What you're feeling, then you know you can you can. And when you're being admonished for your emotions, then that can be a really um, hard on a child uh, who is a uh, strong empath. Um, but right. I think that with each new generation, I feel that there's more awareness and um, you know more and more like whenever they do these um, polls and whatnot. More and more people in North America believe in psychic ability and in life after death and and in in spirit communication and all this kind of stuff. And so um, I think that with more and more awareness, um, that becomes uh, easier on the children. And uh, I can say that in the years of running my show, you know, I've had more than one uh, more than one mother certainly who uh, has called uh, to seek some kind of um, uh, guidance in how to um, deal with their psychic child because they didn't know, you know, they don't know nothing about it. And so I think that that's very commendable for parents to uh, seek out information in how they can help their child to, to, to cope and, and grow up and deal with, um, you know, uh, especially the children that are, you know, uh, having a lot of spirit visitation, um, it can be so amazingly distracting for them, uh, you know, like, so parents, you know, uh, willing to work with the child and help set the bound, like, tell them not to bother you during school, and, you know, all of those kind of things, I think that that, um, you know, would make the experience a lot uh, gentler on the child, and uh, so hope, hoping that with each generation that still comes, that uh, more and more understanding uh, and so that we'll have less fewer children because if I had a dollar for every psychic that told me oh I was really psychic and then I shut it I shut it down because of the religion or because of the family or because of the parents or because of whatever right 
Um, yeah. Yeah. And and then they struggle to get it back later. Yeah. And uh, so um, maybe with each uh, generation that passes, uh, we'll have fewer and fewer of those people that put it away. Because I feel we're in a time when I've said this, you know, over the years, uh, is that used to be that you know we could we would be told only believe what you only believe what you see you know or only believe what you hear and now you can't even believe that you know like now they thought they can edit anything and holographic images can come and you know if they want me to see a tank rolling down the street someone can make that happen i'm sure you know what i mean and yeah. uh, so now we have to. We really are in a position this day and age where we're we're in in desperate need to rely on our own intuition more than anything else, uh, because you can't even believe what you see anymore. Yeah, and the seeing part, I feel like. Um, we forget to really see from our third eye, from our intuition. Um, we're just conditioned to not use that. And I may be biased, Chris, but I really feel like um, all these psychic skills, the energy management skills, the ability to ground ourselves, um, our bodies, our auras, uh, you know, running, um, running spirit energy, earth energy, I feel like that should be I, – I, I really wish it, it could be mandatory for people to learn as, as kids. Because yeah. it could avoid, just this piece of medication could avoid so many reactions from people on a day-to-day basis and allow them to be just in control of their life more. And I feel I feel like that's the need today that we're facing as a society. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, listen, why don't I uh, take a song break and then we'll take some of these calls. Oh, sounds good. Let's do that. All right, uh, so you go ahead if you need to, to take a break or go get any beverages or anything like that. I'll throw on a song, you guys. I haven't heard this one in ages. Uh, it's it's a beautiful song, uh, Sarah McLaughlin. Um, and uh, so let's go. It's five minutes. Are you looking for a place to meet like-minded people? Perhaps you're a light worker looking for a safe place to share your thoughts and services. We've got a place for you. Intuitalks.com. Join for free, post updates, blogs, create and join groups via website or radio or class package. The possibilities are endless. Join the all spiritual, all under one roof network. www.intuitalks.com. Oh, all right, there we go. And so uh, we're back. Um, we have Garima here. She's about to start to take calls. I'll do a quick shout out. Thank you guys all for being here. Amy's there, and um, I guess that's Sandy uh, on the phone from Minnesota. Christy Hu, Diane up there in Canada, over there in Canada, as if I'm, like, down in the States or something like that. In fact, she's south of me, really, Um, down there in Canada, (laughs) down there in eastern Canada. Um, Garima's our guest. Marie, how are you? Mary Margaret on the mend uh, and hinged where she was unhinged, I guess. Uh, I think that's Chrissy on the phone line uh, and Reuben. Reuben James. Okay. I always think of that song when I see Reuben. Um, uh, um, Kimber is there. And uh, I can't remember who Strom is. Uh, I know who, I should know who that is. Um, And... uh, Corrine is there, and no, I don't think so. That's not Astrid. Uh, and uh, Terry is here, and so Gerber Daisy, <laughs> Gerber Daisy from the good old days. Um, so let's go get uh, Garima back on. Hi, Garima. Hi. All right. So are you ready to rock and roll then? Yes, I am. So again, uh, do you want? You have you, what? Do you, what would you like from the callers? Would you like them to state a question for you, or whatever they prefer? I can roll with either. You will roll with whatever comes along. Okay, very good. Well, let's go. Uh, we're gonna go in this order: Ruben, then we're gonna go to Sandy, 
Okay, Fat Sandy in Minnesota. Minnesota. And Chrissy, if that's Chrissy. Uh, Chrissy, if you want a reading, can you press 1 right now on your phone just so I know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, so there we go. Um, so that is Chrissy, and she will have the reading. And then Strom. Can you push uh, 1 on your phone right now if you want a reading? Yes. Who are you? You're unmuted right now. Who Hi, I'm you? Becky. Oh, okay, Becky. Very good. Hi, Becky. Hi. Okay, so you'll be fourth up, okay? Okay, Becky? Okay, thanks, Chris. All right. Uh, there you go. Like, all these names, I can't keep track of everybody, you know? Um, so let's go get Mr. Ruben. Uh, hi, Ruben. Howdy. How are y'all doing? Good, good, good. How are you? Long time no uh talk. Yeah, I know. That's the truth. I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for having me as a, a person that can take your questions. Garima, I am, my name is Ruben Garza. I'm calling from Texas, and I just want to see if you have a general reading about any area that you might be able to pick up. Okay. Um, hi, Ruben. Um, I need a favor from you. Could you say your full name three times so that I can oh. read into your energy? Sure, it's Ruben Garza, Ruben Garza, Ruben Garza. Okay, thank you. Um, you're showing up in a nice uh, earthy um, green color today. Um, and what I'm sensing is just a lot of groundedness um, in, in who you are, um, the way you carry your life, uh, you know, live your life, carry yourself. This is a lot of patience, a lot of understanding for people around you that you're able to offer in relationships. Um, let me see what is coming up. Um, I'm getting an image of a butterfly um, that's hopping from one flower to another. Um, and I feel like this is in regards to your uh, your career. Um, I feel like you're looking into um, a few work options, um, but that's coming up. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, so hang on a second. Let me see what else sure. is there. Um, so, Ruben, at, at the soul level, I feel like what, what your sh spirit is showing me um, are a lot of lessons that you're learning right now are around your survival, um, around finances, around that sense of security, um, just feeling that uh, in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, let's see. Um and it feels like it's an agreement that you had with your father where I feel like your father was uh, also was concerned about money and his focus was also to uh, provide that sense of security to his family. And um, that's, that's one of the things you both have been working on together in this lifetime. Um, just that, that whole ideology, that belief around men have to work very hard um, to be able to sustain a life on, on the earth for not only for themselves, but they have to take responsibilities for their family. So that's kind of the belief um, there is. Um, and just feeling that sense of security as a paycheck comes in or, or money uh, that flows in, I feel like that's the thing you're working on right now. Um, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> that's funny. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, Ruben, I have uh, some guidance, um, and the guidance is to not really tie your self-worth, your um, sense of power uh, with the paycheck, with money. Um, you know, who you are um, is an exceptionally powerful being. There is divine in you, and not really get too worried about money, and, and just trust that m when money will come, um, you know, to cover all your expenses. But instead of asking for money, really – focus on setting the intention for experiences in life. So, um, you know, one, one thing I'm just guided to share is like a lot of times we say, oh, we want million dollars and million dollars, and we want all this money to fit in our bank account. But instead of asking for that, really 
um, setting the intention to attract more experiences in your life. So, for example, mocking up that all my bills are paid, and on top of that, I want to be able to travel the world. Or, or whatever those experiences you want to attract in your life, really, really setting the intention for attracting those. And believing awesome. that you can attract all of them. That's exactly where this shift is coming to. I've learned to say thank you for the things I have not seen yet or that are coming. So that's excellent. Thank you so much. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, you're welcome, Ruben. Good luck with everything. Thank you again, Grandma. Thanks, Chris. Talk to you soon. You be good. Hey, thanks, Ruben. Don't be a stranger. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, uh, so very good. It's been a while since we uh, talked to Ruben. Um, uh, let's go and find. Uh, let's go find Sandy. Is that Sandy? Is that you, Sandy? That's me. Hi. How are you doing? Good. 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 Um, I'm wondering if I can ask you to read my son. If you can tell me anything about his future. Um, Sandy, I will need his permission to read his energy. It's like a psychic ethics I have going on that I will need okay. his permission. Um, but I can help you understand how you relate to him, like in your relationship, that helps. Okay. Or or he if is, you have any other questions. Okay. Just, you know, he is under 18. Um, uh, yeah, then I guess just kind of a general about me would be great. Okay. So, Sandy, would you say your full name for me three times, please? Sure. Sandy Wentz. Sandy Wentz. Sandy Wentz. Thank you. Um, you're showing up in a nice sky blue color today. And um, when I think about uh, the picture that comes to me is, is sky, to be honest. And um, I am just so inspired right now to understand to realize the vastness of your heart um, of who you are there's just so much that you have to offer to people around you there's so much depth you carry in your being um, your ability to touch hearts is just is just really really impressive um, so that's first thing um, that's just my way of saying hello to you at the soul level um, let me see what else is coming up Um, I am seeing this train. Um, it's like uh, it's not the engine, uh, but um, it, it's like one of the blocks of the train, and it's like all glittery. Um, and I feel like there's just so much beauty um, that you want to show up in, um, that you carry in yourself. That's how you want others to others to see you. Um, this is how you want to present yourself to the world. You can take an ordinary thing, but you can you have this ability, this unique ability to make it like appear so beautiful uh, on the surface. Um, so that's what's coming up. Um, let me see. Um, your throat chakra is lighting up, and that's telling me that's a lesson you're working on right now, uh, where you're you're learning to own your communication space to really express who you are and really taking the vastness in your heart that I was just talking about, that depth in your heart, that heart centeredness, the ability to love people, nurture people, and really taking that and translating this, uh, channeling this in your communication space, um, and and really speaking you know, your truth. I feel like that's something you're practicing and learning right now. Okay. Um, there is uh, an image um, coming up where I don't know if you, if your mom um, had it, challenges in expressing herself, um, you know, in, in her communication space, but I feel like it's similar to what she worked on in her lifetime too, or she is working on in her lifetime. Um, okay. Let me see. Um, do, do, do. Go ahead. No, I was just making noise because it's a radio show. Dead air is the death of a radio show. Oh, I didn't understand the joke, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm very misunderstood. It's okay. It wasn't a it's very okay. 
Sorry, um, I was just trying to focus, Chris. So what's coming up is um, you're showing me um, a picture of a house, um, and you're showing me this nice scenery where there's a ro- rainbow up there. And I feel like right now how you how you want to live, what you really value in your in your day to day life, in your living condition, is just a lot of peace and and a lot of uh, space for who you are. Um, and I feel like that's what you're seeking in life uh, right now. Um, just just simple life, not to not to thr- you know not not to bells and whistles. Just very simple life where there's a lot more focus on love, a lot more focus on peace, and just that fulfillment um, that I feel like makes you happy. Yep. Yeah. So that's all that's coming up for for right now. Okay. Do you have any specific question, or are you good with this? Can you tell if there's anything that my inner child needs to work on or is struggling with? Yeah. So I, when I see it, when I see your inner child, I'm seeing a baby that's just not happy right now. Um, it feels a little grumpy, um, and I feel like there's just less permission that you have, you have provided your inner child to be playful, to be out there. And what I was saying just now about communication, um, Sandy, is like really allowing your heart to come out the love that flows in you to come out, uh, you know, and be expressed in front of other people. And the same way, inner child, all four chakra lessons are coming up. The inner child wants to come out more. And this whole this energy of rigidity that sometimes you experience and feel where you have to behave in a certain way or act in a certain way or act ladylike or have to appear this way or have to say things um, that other people appreciate and accept about you, really letting go of all those rules, all that programming, all that conditioning, and really embrace yourself and, and be okay with being silly and, and being okay with being playful and being okay with wanting things and nurturing things and um, just nurturing your own self, you know, really um, – you know, it's okay to take a day off, uh, you know, and, and one Sunday just saying, you know what, today I my inner child just wants to sit on the couch and eat ice cream, and, and that's okay too. So just allowing that, that, giving your inner child that space, that permission to be um, just a child that that is not reasonable at times, you know, and, but there's no need to, for example, count calories in that previous example or to see if other people will accept it or not. But really you being okay with that inner child coming out, inner child being nurtured, I think is the first great step. Okay, that makes sense. Can um, can they tell you um, how I am doing as a mother? Can I ask that? Yeah, you can ask that. Uh, so let me look. Um, so what's coming up is, again, your heart is lighting up, and I feel like um, you're able to connect really well with – you have one son or um, – Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, with your son. Um, you're able to nurture him. Um, you're able to express that love and, and connect with him. But there is something that may not be working that well uh, in this relationship. And what's coming up is this pressure on you as a mother to teach him to be a man, to teach him to be independent, to teach him to be responsible, to teach him um, – a lot of first chakra, chakra is lighting up, which is to teach him how to – survive in this world, to teach him how to be financially independent. So a lot of those things are lighting up, and there's just a lot of pressure on you um, on that front. And I feel like that comes in and creates a barrier at times where where it's hard for you two to just connect at that heart level, which is really your strong point. That nurturing mother, uh, that mother earth that resides in you is is not able to come out at all times because of that pressure. And the mm-hmm. guidance I'm, what I'm getting for you today, uh, Sandy, is to to let that pressure go. That's not your truth. Your child has his own mock-up, and by mock-up I mean he has a solid plan for his lifetime. He came up, he came in, in this world with a solid plan of lessons he needs to learn, experiences he needs to go through, 
relationships that he wanted to be with. Um, so allow space for for his mock-up to come, for him to really enjoy all that he has planned for his lifetime. And so that this pressure goes away, and then you can be the mother that adores him so much, and he could just connect with you at that heart-to-heart level. But will he will he eventually figure all those things out for himself without me pushing yeah. him? Yeah, just like you did and just like I did, <laughs> he will do it too. It's just the age where parents freak out, uh, but, but everything will be fine eventually. Can you tell if he will eventually move out of my house? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> I really need to know that. <laughs> I'll tell you, yes, yeah, so, he will eventually move out of your house. So what, what he's showing me is an unhappy picture where he's, like, so frustrated by all this pressure and, and like, sometimes even nagging energy that he's yep. like, okay, I can't deal with this anymore, and I just want yep. to just go out of here. So now, right. as a mother, Sandy, it's it's a question for you that you don't have to answer me, but you have to figure out the answer for yourself. Do you want to want him to leave and find his own grounding uh, when the time is right, when he's ready, um, when he, but with a lot of love for you so that he, he comes and visits you whenever possible. Like that, that love, I feel like, could be more in front and center than this desire for him to leave. You know, like if he's leaving frustrated and, and angry and he's like, okay, I just don't want to deal with her, um, is that how you want him to leave or do you want him to leave at a nicer note where things are really amicable and he, he wants to call you and, and talk to you and, and spend time with you whenever possible, even though if he lives far away? But that's something for you to figure out. But uh, the guidance I am getting for now is to just focus on that love and everything else will fall into its place. Okay. <laughs> I just want to know at some point in time that he's going to wake up and understand all those things that he needs to do. He'll be oh. fine. He's a smart guy. You know, he he's he's intelligent, so he is smart, but yeah. It, he's been diagnosed with autism, but do you read anything into that? Can you tell me, will they say anything about that? Let me see. So without going too much in depth and without knowing what his symptoms are, what he's telling me is that um, I am just different and I just want more acceptance in life from myself and from people around me. That's what he's telling me. Mm. All right. Got it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. You're welcome, Sandy, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Very good. Uh, Let's go get uh, Chrissy. Hey, Chrissy. How are you doing? Hey, ladies. How are you? Hi, Chrissy. Hi. 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 Um, yes. yes. Sorry. Um, I was going to say um, to say your name three times before you give me your question. All right. You want my biological name or my nickname? Uh, yeah, your full legal name. Okay. I'm Kathleen Perez. Kathleen Perez. Kathleen Perez. Okay. You, you, all three times. It, uh, did you give your uh, first name, middle name, and last name? Yes. And all three times it blocked out your first name. Really? No yeah. way. Really? Yeah all, yeah, all we heard was Kathleen Perez, right? Um. Can you hear yeah, me but okay? it, it yeah yeah. So it got the job. Say it again. Just say it again. Christine Kathleen Perez. There you go. See, mm-hmm. other time, all three times, it it, it uh, blocked out Christine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. So 
what's your question today? I would love to connect to a gentleman that I took care of that passed away four months ago. Okay. So as with any mediumship uh, reading, Christy, a spirit may or may not come forward. Yes. So mm-hmm. I just want to put that disclaimer out there. And, and instead of that gentleman, somebody else may come forward. So I just want you to know that and keep an open mind and, and accept that messages, whatever flows through the spirit today. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So let me look into this. Um, so this gentleman is coming forward. Um, he looks like little. He, he looks like bald. Um, doesn't have hair. Wearing uh, round glasses. Um, yes, yeah, that's him. Uh, okay, that's him. silver frame. Um, he's wearing a polo neck T-shirt, a yellow color T-shirt, khaki pants, or maybe even shorts actually. Um. Uh, petite, um, you know, not too bulky. He's pretty slim. Um, and I would say about about 5'10 uh, in height. So, yeah. And uh, he's saying name John. I don't know if that's his name or somebody he knows. Okay. Does that sound familiar to you? Um, yes, it does. Yes. Okay. And let me see what messages he has for you, okay? He adores you so much, Christy. He's very thankful to you for taking care of him. Um, he's telling me that Christy is just very intelligent, very smart. Um, you know, she she's an all rounder. She this this girl is so amazing. That's what he he's telling me. And he's telling me but somehow she deserves so much in life but somehow she doesn't get uh everything that she deserves. Um, that's what he's telling me. Let me see what else. Um, he's saying that he wants um he he wants you to have get respect from other people um a man that can like honor you um who can take care of you pamper you um and really just honor you as um his wife um or his partner that's what he's saying okay um he's saying that christy uh, please hang in there and and don't compromise with um any opportunity you see just just out of desperation there are good things waiting for you so just hang in there for now yeah does that resonate with you christy does um he used to be a professor and Whenever we would spend time together, it was all lessons about life. And the short time that I took care of him, I grew in, like, love with him. Like, I love this man in a deeper level. Um, He was Hindu, and he was explaining to me about, you know, what he, like, believes in, and I am just, you know, want to thank him for, he was a big part of my life. He safe around him. All the knowledge he gave me, I, that we were on each other's path, but I feel that there was a deeper love, like, regardless of the age difference, we're connected somehow. Yeah, and uh, the picture he's showing me is just 
like I was saying before, there's just so much admiration uh, that this man has for you. Um, he he thinks the world of you. He thinks very highly of you, and that's what he's telling me too. And the picture that he's showing me is that um, he he's almost like caressing your head and putting his hand on your head. Um, and it also there are two things. One is like there's this um, the age gap is very beautiful here because he's able to um, give you that nurturing, um, you know, that I feel like you were longing for at that time. Um, but at at the same time, also able to connect with you at the heart to heart level. But he thinks the world of you, uh, and very. Um, you, it's funny that you mentioned he's a pro, he was a professor because the way he he was talking to me was also in that style and and with a lot of conviction with a lot of passion he was just admiring you that this this girl is super smart um, just complete all rounder has such a beautiful heart and I just just don't want her to compromise in life and and for her to know that good things are coming up. No. Um, his wife had called me. I was in hospice. I was spend time with him. You're breaking up, Christy. And if you could speak, um, Christy, and if you could speak up. Sorry. Me. Um, I just wanted him to always know how much. He just broke up again. Is someone calling you, or is a call waiting, or is? Are you on no. a wireless phone? Are you I on a wireless a phone? A cordless yeah. phone. Phone. Yeah. Um, so it's probably just breaking up every now and then. Uh, it's like whenever well, I am, you meet them. Go ahead. I am so happy and content with my message. It's yeah, and I'm the sense I'm getting is just you're just very emotionally touched right now. <laughs> Um, which might be explaining why we're breaking up here, but I feel like there there might be tears involved, or you're just very happy right now. So I think this is a good time to wrap up this reading. All right. Christy, you're on. Could you say your full name three times for me, please? Yes, Rebecca Strom, Rebecca Strom, Rebecca Strom. All right. What is your question for me tonight? Well, I just wanted to know if you were getting anything on me regarding career or love life. Okay. You're going to love your new job. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, bye. (laughs) Oh. Oh, the the super psychic Chris. <laughs> right. All right. Let me see what comes up there. So I'm starting. Yeah. With, oh, let me see what what's lighting up first. Yeah, it's quite, uh, I'm I'm trying to make sense of this, um, but hold on. Yeah, I feel like just at the the heart level, you're longing to have a family and, and longing to have a partner and longing to have a house together. And you're showing me a picture of gardening and, and watering the plants and just really um, nurturing the space with your heart and, and nurturing this man and, and and really just setting the vibration high for this home. Um, I feel like that's exactly what you're longing for. Let me see what's going on with your relationship, please. Yeah. 
there's this man I'm seeing, um, Becky, mm-hmm. who you're sitting, um, pretty interesting image. You're sitting in a wedding gown, um, and I'm seeing this man who is saying, would you like to dance with me? And you are, um, you want to dance, you want to be with him, but you're like, I am not sure if this man is real. I'm not sure if this relationship will last. I'm not sure if I will enjoy uh, the dance with him. I'm not sure if I will have a good time. I'm not sure if he will stay with me forever. So there's a lot of questioning that's going on in that moment that talks you out of, of this relationship. And this man has this genuine feelings towards you, but I feel like you're not able to give him a chance or because there's just a lot of doubts, a lot of uncertainties in your space that's like really clouding your mind. Mhm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Is there a man um that you're in conversation with or Yes. Uh huh. Situ- oh, this situation has come up and Mhm. Exactly what you described. Okay. So that that man is showing up and I feel like there might be a potential with him uh for a relationship. For whatever reason, it's really hard for you to wrap your head around that. But at the same time, um, I feel like what what you're focusing on is not your truth. Uh, what you're focusing on is um, just very surface level external things that are coming up as sometimes judgment, as sometimes doubts and fears and whatnot. But that's definitely not your truth at all. Mm-hmm. So I feel like. There might be uh, some value in exploring that, um, you know, for yourself and giving him a chance and spending some time with you and see what your heart is telling you, not all these doubts and fears. Right. Great. Okay. Anything about career, Karima? Okay. Yep. Sure. Let me see. Um, You're showing me an image of sitting in a library and you're taking out one book and then you are like, okay, um, that is not interesting. So let me go keep it back and then taking out another book. And and you're you're just showing me this picture, this recurring pattern that you're taking one book, finding it non-interesting or boring, putting it back, taking another out, putting it back, taking another out and putting it back and so on. And I feel like um, if you haven't defined what is it that you want out of this um, job that you're looking for or the career you, you're wanting to make? I feel like being super clear, Becky, on what you're looking for will help you attract that in your life. But I don't feel like you're there. So there's some thinking that needs to be done where you can be clear on on what can um, make keep you passionate about work, what makes you feel fulfilled about work, what kind of coworkers you want, what kind of environment you want, what kind of work schedule you want, what kind of work that you want to be doing. So I feel like all those details need to be worked upon right now. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> uh, that's it. Um, that's coming up, unless you have any other questions. Um. Do you see anything regarding um, my sister? Um, so when you say anything regarding my sister, so that will be reading her um, energy, no, right? No, me. Well, me and her, or me regarding my sister. Okay, so your relationship with your sister, is that right? Yes. Um, very sweet and sour relationship you guys have going on there <laughs> where uh, some days best friends, some days, you know, maybe not talking to each other. So that's what's coming up. Let me see. Um, but I feel like I'm, you're showing me this image of being in a bus and you both are sitting together and and just chatting away, and this whole bus ride feels just more lighter and and non-monotonous that way. So I feel like together you have found this companionship that works uh, for you, but then there are moments where it does work and there are moments that, that, that don't work that well. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much, Karima. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris.
All right, right. Becky, thanks for calling. Okay. Don't be a stranger, okay? Uh, okay, thank you. All right, take care. I um, okay, let's go get, hopefully Mary Margaret sound is okay. Hi, Mary Margaret. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, yep, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, Good. yeah, it's very interesting tonight. Mm hmm thank you. <laughs> um, I was wondering if, um, she could see my brother-in-law that passed away, uh, couple months ago, um, I wondered if he might be, um, keeping around. Jim? Um, so, hi, Mary Margaret. Hi. How are you, Grima? Good. How was your surgery? It was good. It's all done, and, and it's healing up, and I'm, I'm sore, but it's, uh, it's doing real well. Okay, and you're, like, feeling better now? Yes, yes. Wonderful. That's really awesome to hear. Oh, and, thank um, you. Yeah, and just to make sure, uh, can you say your full name three times for me? Sure. Mary Margaret Simmons. Mary Margaret Simmons. Mary Margaret Simmons. Nice. Thank you. Um, and the question you had was to, to be able to receive messages from your brother-in-law. Is that right? Yes, uh-huh. And uh, you said he passed away a few months ago? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Yeah, the connection yes. the connection is still not super clear uh, on my end, so that's why I'm just validating, making sure I got your question right. Um, perfect. So like I was explaining before, um, you know, sometimes spirit, you know, choose to come forward, sometimes right. it doesn't. So I'm going to try and let's see what happens. Okay, thank you. Uh, so a gentleman is coming forward. Um, he has um, a little bit more heavier uh, side, medium to heavy build. Um, looks looks young, like about I would say in his fifties, late fifties. Um, he is wearing some sort of military uniform um, and hair, um, just medium sleeve hair. Um, not too short, not too long, black hair, white skin. Um, just overall looks pretty athletic. Um, does that, does that present that sounds like my other brother-in-law. Your other brother-in-law? Uh-huh. Is he alive or is he passed away? He was passed. He was in the I'm Navy. Sorry? He was in the Navy. Oh, and he passed away too? Yes. Okay, so... For some reason, I am able to tune in to him. Uh, would you like to receive messages from him? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me see. Um, it's, so I'm not able to completely understand it, it, Mary Margaret, so I can use some help here. But basically, he is telling me about a house that he has. Um, and he says that he wants this house to be given to the real owner, um, maybe his wife. Uh, I don't know who owns this house, but he he's he's pretty stern in in how he's communicating, and he's saying that um, this house belongs to her, and I want this house to be given to her. He's supposed to resell, and that 
I can't hear you very good, Mary I Margaret. I don't know what's happening. Okay, what's happening? Um, hi, Margaret. I'm having a hard time okay, hearing sorry. you, Mary Margaret. Okay, um, she's going to sell the house and move in with her sister. Okay, so he was planning on selling the house and moving in with his sister before he passed away? No, uh, no, she is now. She's going to sell the house and move in with her sister. But I think one of the sons lives with her, and um, he's had a lot of problems. So that could very possibly be what's talking about, maybe, uh, yeah, I feel like, and the sister is his wife, right? Uh, your sister yes. is his wife. Yeah, so I yes. feel like he wants his, his wife to keep the house. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see if he wants to say anything else. Um, he's saying to you, Mary Margaret, that uh, you have been nice to him, and um, he just wants to thank you for all that you did for him. Uh, he was a good guy. I love him. Yeah. Um, he, he's showing me a picture of giving you a big hug, like a really big hug and like a bear hug. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he's just saying that thank you for being there for my for my wife, too, even though I'm not there. Okay. Thank you, Gurima. Yeah, you're oh, welcome. And I'm so happy to hear that you, you're you healing well. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember reading for you uh, the first time I was on this show, and your leg looked in very very bad shape. So I'm so happy that the surgery went well, and, and you're healing nicely. Yes, I've got a lot of metal in it, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, Chris. All right, Mary Murphy. Thank you. Okay, well, that looks like all for our callers. Um, so can you let everybody know how they can get a hold of you? Um. Yeah, absolutely. My details are listed uh, on this bio on Chris's page, but uh, it's my website is spiritual-alignment.com. Uh, and I post blogs and video blogs and whatnot, so feel free to take advantage of all that free content. Um, I could be reached via email and phone number as my phone as well, and all that is listed there. But um, my number is maybe I can just type it up in the chat window. And so we're just saying it out loud because there's some people that might be listening on a different um, platform and they yeah. won't be seeing the chat room. And, yeah, uh, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, um, makes sense. My number is 302-521-3488. Again, it's 302-521-3488. And my email is Garima, my first name, G-A-R-I-M, as in Mary, A, 0608 at gmail.com. Awesome. Okay, um, so we'll see you back again in about a month, I guess. Oh, let me double check. Uh, I see that there is um, Corrine there, and there is, uh, who else? Um, oh, uh, Kimber. And so if either, I was assuming that you guys are just listening. So if either of you guys uh, want to get a reading right now, would be the time to press one on your phone. And uh, say hello to us. And if not, then uh, then we can uh, let Garima go get some well-deserved rest. I think that's it then, Garima. Okay. A most enjoyable, most enjoyable uh, conversation with you this evening. Thank you very much for your time. And I know that the people all really enjoyed their uh, their messages. And so, good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris. I really had fun tonight. Thank you for being so patient with me every single time. Oh, no, no. There's no patience involved uh, at all. You're you're, aw you're awesome. I appreciate your time and uh, your willingness to come on and 
and do the show with us. So, uh, yeah. so we'll be in touch and we'll see you uh, see you in a month's time or so. Um, yeah, enjoy the lot. Enjoy yeah, you your too. Deal. Enjoy your week as well. Take care, Chris. Bye. Bye, everybody. Karima. Okay, you guys, I'll put a song on and then we'll see what you guys are up to if you want to call it a night or if you want to yak for your overtime or what. So we'll just go with this, okay? Okay, you guys, it's overtime now. Corrine, you there? Yeah, can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. How's it going? Okay, good. Uh, I've had better days. Um, in the continuing saga, like a bad freaking rerun of Dallas, You know, Chris, what don't I get? All right, anyways, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who has tried to help Summer. She passed away this morning. Chris, I know you were sending her Reiki, and it was helping. It really was helping. And just something, like, Marilee said that she had some sort of bleeding internally and then had some sort of, and, but Summer was all like, I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to start losing weight. She was very positive. And then this internal bleeding started. She went to the emergency room and apparently she also had a blood infection. They couldn't figure out where the blood infection was coming from. And she passed away at about 9.30 this morning. So um, it's just, um, you know, that's like, it's so, I, I, oh, my God. I just feel so bad for Marilee. She was so close to her sister. Anyways, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody praying for her and everything that you've done for this cause. I mean, it's just, it's so important, you know. So, Anyways, um, I'll talk to Marilee probably tomorrow or the next day. She doesn't, you know, you, you're exhausted when this happens. Like, she goes, my little sister's gone. I said, I know. And it's just so effing bad. And, yeah. um, but anyways, I don't know, yeah. you know. And um, so that was kind of a shitty way to. A sh- not, not, not shitty. It's not sh- as shitty for me as it is for Marilee, of course. But anyway, so I just want to say thank you for that, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Wait, for me, Meanwhile, who died? What's that? Corinne, who died? My friend, she's like my one of my be- very best friends, Marilee's sister, little sister Summer. Oh. Um, did she call into the show? Summer? No, she never called. No, she never oh, called okay. into the show. Yeah. Oh, that I recognized the name. Maybe I mentioned and Amber, her. They sound the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah. well, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. It, it, you know, I mean. I guess it was to be expected because she did weigh so much and she, she, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's like, you know, Oh, you had talked about her. You had talked about her. Okay. Now it's coming back. Okay. Sorry to keep interrupting. That's okay. That's okay. Um, And then here's the other side of the heartbroken coin is that, I finally, and I, I, you guys, I know I sound like a broken record, which this is the rerun of Dallas that you never wanted to see again, is that I finally, I talked to my ex last night for like four hours, and I finally got him to tell me the truth, which is that he is not in love with me anymore, and he never wants to be in that kind of relationship anymore. And, of course, I was like, what? You know, I'm so stupid. What? And anyways, um, oh, God. so, of course, I got upset. I didn't cry on the phone. I didn't cry on the phone. But, like, I want you in my life. You know, you're important to me. And I said, I can't be your friend. I'm sorry, man. 
it's like, I don't, he goes, I guess we're not going to get together then next week. And I said, probably not. Because yeah. I can't continue to be hurt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it's just, it's, oh, you know, God. you guys, this is something we all, do. we all go through this, right? We all get turned down and said, oh, I don't love you anymore. And, yeah, but, but it's to really me, easy for our, guys. You have to understand that guys um, don't operate from a place of emotion like women do. So him saying that Lord only knows what it what it means. You know, it doesn't mean right. it doesn't mean what a girl would think that um it meant. Because guys are just like that book about men are from well, I don't know where they're from and women are from some other place. Totally wired different. Totally wired differently. So um, that was just like a practical. They're more solution based, and I think he just said that. It doesn't mean what it sounds like. Thank you, you Amy. Know. Because okay, it means how, how, you know uh, who knows what it means, but it doesn't mean like because I've had that same thing told to me by this person who keeps reappearing in my life who um very lethal very lethal person very broken very everything but um he he still continues to appear now he didn't have any idea what it meant he really had no idea what it meant it was just that Basically, it was like he couldn't handle the responsibility, couldn't handle the vulnerability of being a responsible party in a relationship. So he said something similar. He said something similar to that, and that was my immediate reaction when you said those particular words. But he still wants to be friends. It's like I'm too fucked up to. Um, basically, he's just saying I'm too fucked up to be in a relationship. I have no effing idea what I want, so I need to keep you, um, you know, in, in my um, in my immediate circle. Um, so anyway, that's all I wanted to all I wanted to say is it doesn't even uh, it doesn't mean what you think it means. Okay, right. basically, it's just well, like this. Um, it's basically just a confession that he's effed up. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Amy. And and I feel that I feel that way too. But I still, you know, there's a saying that says, when someone shows you who you who they are, believe them. And it's right. like I, exactly. you know, exactly. And, and also believe me. that you can't fix them because that was my thing with this. Uh, oh my God, this. Stupid, and you know, and it's funny because he's a client of mine now. So, like, he never goes away. It's like herpes; he never goes away. But um, you know, it had ended several times in um, less than um, you know, very dramatic. With me just absolutely devastated and paralyzed, and brought back every abandonment issue that I have, which mine are, mine are multiple as well, and then, but then he has the audacity to come back into my life, to knock, not like, oh, I kept calling him one day, he wanted to talk to me, every single time he's come back into my life, he's initiated it, because I'm the only person on the whole freaking planet that remotely gets him. And lets him be him for good or for bad. Um, oh, that's why I'm getting I'm getting irritable bowel syndrome listening to uh, when you said that when you said what he said. I said, oh my god, that's so familiar. Yeah. Anyway, the yeah. end. Well, I'm driving home. <laughs> Hopefully, I make it home. Oh, I have because. Um, I flew to Louisville. I was too sick of driving. Then I rented one car. Then when I went to go 
And I was like, how am I going to get home? I rented one car, like, for a day. So I called to find out how much, because I looked online, and to rent a car for a month, it's only going to be, like, $500. So I was like, I'll just rent a car for a month. I didn't hear that. One. I re- I'll just rent a car for a month because I need one. And um, then I called to find out how much it was going to cost. I thought, oh, I can just extend the rental that I have. And they were like, I said, how much will it be to rent this car for extended for a month? And she said, $2,860. So anyway, so I had to go take that car back and rent a new car. And now I'm in a Ford F-150 pickup truck to my natural habitat (laughs) driving through Indiana. (laughs) It's great. It's great because then I can go get stuff. Why are you going to? Why are you going to Indiana? Because that's how you get to Louisville. Why are you going to Indiana? I was going to Louisville. I flew to Louisville. Now I have to drive home. And what separates my house from Louisville is Indiana. It's five hours long. It's the Mm. most godforsaken place I've ever been. No offense to anyone on the call who might be from this fair state. Their number one, like I just saw this thing where... Everyone, uh, they had like the number one accidental cause of death in all 50 states. Well, Illinois, where um, I live, is getting hit by trains, which makes sense because there's been three people in my town who died since I moved there. I've lived there for two months uh, getting hit by trains. But mo- because it's a really good way to suicide because you got to really – good likelihood of not making it. So, anyway, um, the end. That's why I'm in Indiana, but I don't, oh, but Indiana is is math. I know, I forgot to finish the story. The number one accidental cause of death in Indiana is meth. And it's just like, it's just a weird place. I don't know if there's too much inbreeding or there's not enough cultural stimulation. I don't know, but, like, when I stop to get gas and stuff like that, I just get really scared because people seem really, um, like, children of the, children of the corn. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that, that is funny. It's really bizarre. You can just sense their, oh, anyway. I'm not a big fan of the whole Midwest, but um, no offense to anyone who's from the Midwest. It's not my natural habitat, but Indiana is like, and then in the middle of it, there's these windmills. Oh, yeah, I just passed. But anyway, go on with your story. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to make this about me. Well, yes, I did. But anyway, no. <laughs> I mean that's um. That's the end of my story. It's like, okay, so, Kareen, close the damn book already, will ya? You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, but don't you, you know, I can't, here's there's. The thing. Wait, as I interrupt again. Here's the thing. Hopefully, because like when the last time I broke up with Mr. Emotionally Unavailable, um, I was, like, sitting across. I can't even explain it. We were supposed to be going to New Orleans, and I, you know, we were supposed to be going to whatever. It's a big, long story. Well, I go, I look across the table, and he was, like, eating. And you can tell he would, like, just always eat the locusts. Like, his table manners were so unsightly. And the food was, like, flying in the air, almost like how, um, you know, sometimes – the chopsticks, they get it to, like, kind of, like, the food to kind of take flight, and it, like, flies into your mouth. Kind of like that, only it was that mm-hmm. soup, it was spaghetti, and it was, like, made me, like, so violent. I just, like, like looked across, and I was, like, I was, like, you know what? You're not wired to live a life that has other people in it. And just at that moment in time, Suddenly, I didn't feel abandoned anymore. Suddenly, I finally got, I didn't feel like, 
oh, I got broken up because I'm unwanted, I'm unworthy. You know, there was the shame went away. The shame of getting went away. And um, the shame went away. And I was like, oh, this is right. just a broken person. And this is just an exercise, complete exercise in futility to think that this is going to go anywhere. Because, I mean, I'm truly in love with this person. I mean, and, um, and there's like this deep connection. But he's so broken. You know, it would be like trying to get, you know, I don't know, like a broken TV to work or a broken radio to work. He's just too broken. So it's not like when the TV's broken, you're like, oh, the TV doesn't love me. It's like the TV's broken, you know. And um, hopefully you can get to that point with Chris where it's not a personal attack on your worthiness, but rather it's like, oh, the TV's broken. Of course it doesn't or, you know, nobody can watch TV on this TV. It's not that it's, it's, it's not like, it's not me. It's not me. But it took a really long time. This relationship had been going on for, off and on, for 25 years. Wow. Wow. So, um, um. Just a horribly, horribly broken, horribly, horribly broken person. And then it was so interesting because when I found out that he was a client, I just sent him a quick email. I just said, I just wanted you to know I was working here. I was working here now and I moved to Chicago. Um, You know, just so he would have a heads up and know. To, if he doesn't want to talk to me, to, you know, behave according, you know, be careful about what he um, asked for over the phone, you know, because, um, you know, to be careful to ask for people specifically and not whatever. Doesn't even write me back. Doesn't even write me back. Congratulations. Doesn't even write me back. Wow, that's a big change from Florida. Nothing. Just dead, dead air. It's like... Oh, yeah, the broken TV. And every once in a while I get these, I still get these urges because mm. um, I want to be set, because the connection is very deep and very strong. So every once in a while I get these little urges. I got it last, last week. I got it. <laughs> urges. urges. But not, yeah, not that kind. Um, <laughs> But it's just a broken TV. It's a broken TV. Chris there? I mean, not Chris. Chris yeah, there. you know, I used to describe my ex as... I... I used... Sorry. I, I used to describe my ex as a TV that didn't come in, like no channels came in. It was kind of fuzzy, and once in a while you'd see a picture, but then it would fade out, and you couldn't see anything. It was a channel that never came in. You know what I mean? He used to oh, get so funny. mad at me when I told him that. But that's it's so the funny. truth. How did I, you know, I it's like you you never focus. There's, there's nothing... You there's you can never see the whole being of you because it's not there. There's no integrity, in other words. Right. Then, right. And I can't believe So that. he's I mean, bragging the other night, right, that um, this girl that met him at a bar, she, he, this girl that met him at a bar was, hold, like, grabbed his arm and wouldn't let go. She wouldn't let go of him, right? So I'm telling Renee this. And Renee goes, that's because that's all he has. That's why he's telling you that. That's all he has is, like, the sex appeal and handsomeness. That's all he has, and he knows that, you know. And I said, yep, yep, indeed, that is all he has. And so when he said, I want to be, you know, I I want you in my life, you're important to me, really, really, 
I said, you need, you know, you probably have this simple little girlfriend. He goes, well, you think I, I, don't, I don't want someone intelligent, that I have just some dimwit that I, that I want to hang out with? I go, yeah, that's what I think, actually, you know. Because I said, I was a challenge to you that you didn't want to meet and you couldn't step up to. I had to, I had to say it. And he's like, no, that's not true. That's not true. I'm like, that's exactly true, you know? Yeah. 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 Whatever. Mm. Well, I, I, and I don't know if you entire, if you, if you really ha- do believe it yet. And don't let yourself get, get going like, oh, he wasn't telling you just saying that because or whatever you know what I mean I I right, agree with you right. which is that you know believe them when they show you who they are you know and that's that's right. a hard thing right. I mean oh and it was like it's like go ahead go ahead I'm sorry no no go ahead no I I I'm sorry I interrupted you. So listen, uh, so let me, well, just let me well, uh, let me just end this. Why don't we end the recording of the show anyway? Uh, and I forgot about that. And um, and then and then we can and then we can talk and then we can. I think you're on delay again. Okay. as part of the problem. And so I uh, thank you, archive listeners and live sure. listeners. Of course, and uh, uh, you all just have to check the listings for when we're on next, because I never know who's going to show up anymore, you know. Uh, <laughs> but thank you very much, and we'll be back. Uh, just check our archives out, uh, you know, as you know how to do. So thank you very much.